It is a honor and a pleasure to be able to share the Word of God with you this day. This truly is the day that the Lord has made. Let's bow our hearts before him now. Father, we come to you in that precious name of Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity, Father, to share your word, Father God. Father, I thank you for each one today, every soul, Father God. Holy Spirit, I tell you that you are welcome in this place. Please come and orchestrate our time together today as only you can do. Please lead us and guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Praise God. We've been looking at the fear of God. I think this is the third time together that that we've uh, explored that subject. And we know that the fear of God is a foundational principle that will certainly return in its fullness before the final harvest. Uh, the fear of God is very, very important to us as believers. It's also very important that non-believers have a healthy, proper fear of God, his name, and he is to be feared. We define the fear of God as, in the Hebrew and the Greek, as honor, adoration, respect, to hold him up high, to revere him, for him to be our dread positively. And it is utterly ridiculous for a non-believer to think that God should have sovereign rule over their lives. You know, many of those folks don't even think he exists or that if he did, he is dead. And they couldn't be more wrong. It's so important for us as believers to have a proper fear of God. And I believe that is why God is emphasizing this in this day. It is so important for us, it's so important for our nation, for America at this time, to return to God, to repent and seek his face. God also added to the, uh, the definition of adoration and honor and love. He also said that we need to give him first place in our lives. And it's only right that he would have first place in your life and in my life. If God truly is given first place in your life and in my life, everything else in our lives will start to line up the way God intended. His precepts, his commandments, everything will start to line up. All our other relationships and so forth, our job and our homes and so forth. We definitely need a proper fear of the Lord. We looked at some ways we can get the, the fear of God in our lives. We looked at the tremendous hugeness of the universe that God has created. We looked at the vast distances between planets and the sun and the moon and the stars. It's almost unimaginable. We can't quite wrap our mind around all those things. Um, but it says, it says in Scripture that God placed the billions times billions of stars with his hand, with his fingers, and he knows every one of them by name. Glory to God. Glory to God. On the exact opposite end, we realize that everything God has made is built on cells, which are made up of molecules and even smaller Elements called atoms. Atoms are so small that on the type page, a period at the end of a sentence, there's over a billion of them in that period, in that punctuation mark. But yet most of the space in that atom is empty space. Little bundles of energy called electrons fly around at the speed of light around protons and neutrons and they create what scientists call nuclear energy. That's the term they give it because they, they don't quite understand it. Colossians tells us that it is God himself that holds everything together. By him all things consist, and he holds them and keeps them together. Another thing we learned that would provide the uh, fear of God in our lives is that we 
cannot forget the non-optional principles of God's word. We need to obey his word. We need to trust his word. Hallelujah. Those are just some of the ways. Another definition that God gave me, it, it, it's not honor and it's not all, although it is, but it, it explains that uh, definition a little bit more, the importance of that definition, and that is the continual awareness, the continual awareness that I am in the presence of a holy, just, and almighty God, and that my every word, deed, action are open before him, and are being judged by him. If I truly believe this to be part of the definition of the fear of God, and I do, that would have a drastic, drastic impact on my motives. It would have a drastic, drastic impact on your motives. Why do you do the things you do? Why do you not do some things? What are your motives? It would have a drastic impact on our thoughts. Scripture says to bring every thought, not some, every thought into the obedience of Christ. Bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. What about our words? If I really believe that, that everything is naked and open before God, wouldn't it have an effect on my words? Words are so very, very important. God is so concerned about the words that come out of your mouth and the words that come out of my mouth. Scripture says that words are, are power of life and death are in our words. Words are spiritual containers of life or death. They are so very, very important. And these are just some of the things that we talked about in the past. I just wanted to review them quickly and remind you of some of those things. Today we want to go on forward and we want to look at the products or the blessings of having the fear of God in our lives. Today we're going to be Bereans. Do you remember the story about the Bereans? I'll read it here briefly for you in Acts 17, verse 10. It says, and the, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These, referring to the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica, that the Bereans received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. That is an extremely important expression there for me and you. They received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed. The reason I've said that is, you know, we're going to search a lot of scriptures today. We're going to go a lot of places to find out the products and the wonderful things that the fear of God will truly produce in our lives, and we need these things. So if, take, if you have your Bible, turn with me well, I'm going, uh, to, to Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to start there. But before that, I want to read Proverbs chapter 4, starting in verse 20. He says, My son, I want to put you ladies at ease. When he says, My son, he's talking to you too. Spiritually, we are all the sons of God. Can you say amen? Amen. He says, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Attend means to prick up the ears. Hearken. Listen intently to my words. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they, my words, are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Get a hold of my words. That's what find them means. Hang on to them. Keep them for yourself. Don't let them depart from your eyes. You know, if you're sick, you want to take your medicine, you want to take healing scriptures. But this says, 
Every word. Attend to my words. The word of God will heal you. We talked about that last week. If, the, if you can hear the word of God, it will heal you. Attend to my word. Consider my word. For they are life. That's from Genesis to Revelation. You know, all scripture. I've been, I've been running in lately to words like every, each, all, and every time they just explode in front of me because God is saying all scripture. How many does that leave out? Again, that's Genesis to Revelation. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, Throughly furnished unto all good works. That word perfect there means that he is prepared right now. This moment, my brother, my sister, it means that the man of God is prepared this moment to defeat the enemy. To defeat the works of the evil one. How do we do that? How did the Lord Jesus defeat the enemy? It is written. That's why he tells us, attend to my words. Let them not depart from your eyes. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word. There's another one of those words. All, every, each. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life. Find those words of life. They are health to all your flesh. If you're in Proverbs 1, we're going to look at verse 7. Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning, the principal part, and the choice part of knowledge. In other words, that's where knowledge starts. That is the essence of knowledge. Beginning is first in place, time, and order of rank. Knowledge is defined there as instructions, facts, truth, principles, understanding, discernment, comprehension, and judgment. We certainly need those things in our life. Amen? We need the knowledge of God, praise God. The fear of God, to adore Him, to honor Him, to revere Him, for Him to be our dread positively, is the beginning of knowledge. Then, then we are to go on. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 says, Then shall we know if we follow on to know Jesus. We follow on to know the Lord. Jesus said this in John chapter 8, verse 31. If, we talked about that last week. I made a big deal about the word if. It has a lot of meaning. It's very small in letters, one of the smallest in our language. But oh, it has such great meaning. If you, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fear of God is the beginning of knowledge, and then we must go on and follow on to know the Lord. If you turn over to chapter 3, verse 7 is the second benefit of fearing God that we're going to look at today. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You know, don't be intelligent. Don't be skillful or artful in your own eyes. That means no vanity, no egotism. You have to watch the self-esteem. Narcissism. Oh, how big is narcissism in our society in America today? Humble yourselves in the eyes of the Lord. Humble yourselves in the eyes of the Lord. I want to read Proverbs 16, verse 19 to you. 
It says, Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. If we move on to uh, chapter 22, verse 4, he says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. The rewards of humility and the proper fear of God are riches, honor, and life. In Proverbs 29, added to these, these, these scriptures, verse 23, says, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. In other words, he who is of a humble spirit shall obtain honor. Proverbs 15, 33 says, Before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. In chapter 8, we see another benefit, another product of the fear of God. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. I told you we were going to be Bereans this morning. Amen. We're going to search the scripture. Glory to God. Don't you just love the word of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Verse 13 of Proverbs 8 says, And arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of God produces a hatred for evil. Perfect hatred, like God hates. The root word for evil means to spoil by breaking to pieces. To make good for nothing, to be good for nothing. That means bad. Physically, socially, morally. What does our enemy do? He steals, he kills, he destroys. It's to hate all of his works. It's to hate all of those things. We're not to hate people, amen? God doesn't hate anyone. God doesn't hate anyone. Do you believe that? God's will is still that each one would come to repentance, that each one would be born again. Jesus has provided that for 8 billion, 30 million, 500 and some thousand people who are on the earth today. Glory to God. Sadly, many of them won't ever do that. They wouldn't even consider it. But God's attitude and God's will is still that not one of those 8 billion, 30 million, 500 and some thousand would perish. Praise God. Hallelujah. We should have a healthy, proper fear of Him. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God. Not hating people. No. Hate the sin. Hate the sin. And that's what it is. It's sin. Some people don't want to even hear that word anymore. Listen, God loves the people. That's for sure. But the sin cannot enter His presence. We better not be in that sin, that one that so easily besets us when God judges it. You know, society, they're trying to ram all these things down our throat, all inclusive. Anything goes, God is love. Yes, he is love. You know, that's the way the enemy does things, folks. He'll take the word, he'll take a little bit of a word, a little bit of a verse, which is true, God does love everyone, and then he'll pervert it. If he, just, if he just said the perversion, you wouldn't even give it the time of day. You wouldn't even give it the time of day. We looked at Romans chapter 1, and sadly, some preachers can't even go there. Some preachers are told, don't you dare go to that chapter, don't you mention anything about that chapter, because we've got to love everybody, and we have to include everybody. Those folks need to turn and realize they need to attend to God's word. It never changes. You know what God says about those folks that do those things and encourage others to do them and find pleasure in them. He said they are worthy of death. 
because it is sin. God is holy. He said, be holy, for I am holy. Amen. The fear of God produces a hatred for evil, a hatred for the works of the devil. Of course, not hating people. We need to help those people. We need to help them as we're led by the Holy Ghost. The precious, precious Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost, people. We need Him so badly. More and more fire. More and more glory of God. In chapter 9, verse 10, we see another product of the fear of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In other words, it's like a commencement. It's the start. It's the opening of wisdom. I love that word wisdom in the Hebrew. It's the word chokmah. I guess I just like saying chokmah. That's one reason. But it means to be wise in mind, word, or act. It means skillful wisdom. And if it's skillful wisdom, you know where we got it. We got it from our Heavenly Father. Amen? It means to understand the Word. It means to speak the Word. It means to do the Word of God. The beginning of wisdom. We need godly wisdom to put the knowledge, the godly knowledge that we have into action. I pray every day, God, give me your wisdom about every situation. Grant me your wisdom and give me the, your understanding and your knowledge to use your wisdom, Father God. Hallelujah. We need it so badly, folks. In verse 27 of chapter 10, we see the next benefit of the fear of God. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. Days. It means produces what? Long life. God said in Psalm 91, 16, With long life will I satisfy him. I want to turn to Isaiah chapter 65, verse 22. Let's go back to verse 21. He says, And they shall build houses, talking about us, God's people, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Glory to God. A proper fear of God produces long life. We're looking at the things that a proper fear of God will give us in our lives. Amen. We'll never exhaust the list, folks. You're going to find it. You're going to find them all through. God's Word. We just start in Proverbs because that's a great place to start. The book of Proverbs' main theme is the fear of God. Yeah, we could have started in Ecclesiastes. Solomon, the teacher, he talked about all kind of issues of life. Twelve chapters. He came up with the conclusion that everything is vanity. Everything is vanity. He said the whole duty of man is to what? Fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and do what he tells you to do. Honor him, respect him, give him first place. Know that he is God. Hallelujah. Revere him highly, above all, above everyone. Praise God. Proverbs 14, 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. And his children, that's you, amen? That's you and me, that's us. His children shall have a place of refuge. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. 
and his children shall have a place of refuge. Strong means strength in many, many, many applications. It means force, security, majesty, praise, boldness, loudness, might, power, and strength. Strong confidence. Confidence means a refuge. He is our refuge. He is our security. Hallelujah. He is our assurance. assurance. Because of him we have hope and we trust. Hebrews 10.35 says, Cast not away your confidence. Father God is our confidence. Amen. Amen. A place of refuge. It means a standing or a spot of shelter, of hope, a place of trust. His children, his children shall have a place of refuge. You know God's building a family, amen? God's adding to his family every day, glory to God. Aren't you thankful this morning that you are a part of God's family? Hallelujah. You could be out there and be totally lost. Many, many people, there's 8 billion, 30 million are. They need to repent. They need to repent. That's the first step and come back to the one and only God. Father God, hallelujah. Father's building a family. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Mike was talking about why do murderers protect murderers? Why do rapists protect rapists? Why do pedophiles protect pedophiles? That's their family. That's why they do that. That's why they're so concerned with lessening the penalties for such heinous crimes. That's their family. Again, aren't you glad, aren't you very thankful that you're a part of God's family? Do you know there's a law that's going to be passed very soon in our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. that's going to lessen the penalty for those heinous crimes. Murder, rape, pedophilia, if someone sells you drugs and you die, out too bad for you, it's not their fault, it's your fault. They should go scot-free. That's the kind of ludicrous, godless junk that's happening in our nation today. You know, will we repent? Will America Turn to God and repent from our wicked ways. Or will we continue down that path of destruction that we're on? Just like Judah, just like other nations in the past, we can read about them. Will America become a victim of her own wickedness? Immorality abounds in America today. It waxes worse and worse every day. Will we repent? Will we repent as a nation? And what about us? What about the children? His children, our ch- God's children. What about us? Christians. Non-believers gave the first Christians, they gave them that name because they followed Christ. They were disciples of Christ, so that's Christian. What about Christians? What did God say? Every scripture, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Yes, we have a better covenant today, but the old is not passed away. It's fulfilled. Every scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. What about what God said? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Something's wrong, folks. Something's wrong. We haven't accomplished one of those things. I think we do pretty fairly well with the first three, at least at times. Humble yourself. 
pray, seek God. But what about turning from your wicked ways? Let's just face the truth. Worldly pleasures and the world's ways, sometimes we just want them. We don't want to give them up. We don't want to give them up. We don't want to turn away from them. Because yes, for a season it is pleasurable. But the end thereof is not. God said when you do those four things, then I will hear. God said, I will hear from heaven and I will turn and heal your land. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. Praise you, Father God. Father is building a family. Amen. Hallelujah. In him is strong confidence. He is our confidence. One, one verse down, 14, uh, Proverbs 14, 27 says, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart the snares of death. To turn one away from the snares of death. We talked a good bit about that. A fountain is a wellspring. It's springing up. It's a never-ending source of living water. A never-ending source of living water. Agua viva. Is the Spanish for living water. A never-ending supply. There's so much there and there's the pressure's so great that it just explodes up out and it never ends. It's like an artesian well. That's what an artesian well does in the natural. It just explodes up out of that well and it overflows and runs 24-7. Hallelujah. That's what the fear of God, the proper fear of God will do for your life. It's a fountain of life to turn away one from the snares of death. It is a source of satisfaction of whatever we need. You remember Isaiah 12, With joy shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation. Whatever we need. Whatever we need, God supplies. Agua viva, that has special meaning for my wife Edith and I. I'll just share a story with you. I'm not sure how many years ago it is, but it was, uh, it was in the early 80s. Uh, we got involved with an orphanage in Guatemala, and that was the name of it. Agua viva, living water. There were 40-some children there and we got to go there we got to visit our oldest daughter was teaching school in Guatemala she was there for a number of years and we were blessed that we could go for like 10 or 15 days and be with her and go to the orphanage and just sightsee whatever be with some other folks that were there missionaries that, that lived there and um uh, we knew that God was dealing with us to go to that orphanage. He wanted us to prepare ourselves to get ready and go and, and be at that orphanage. I had a great job. I, had, I worked at uh, New Cumberland Army Depot, and everybody said, Oh, my Lord, you're going to give that up. What's wrong with you? Well, God said, and he did. And we started preparing. We started doing the things in the natural you need to do, and we started getting shots and getting paperwork and passports and all that stuff ready, and we were about ready to go. And our pastor at the time came to me one day in fear, in the fear of God, and the fear of me, I think, just as much. But he was almost afraid to tell, tell me what God told him. He said, I know you're prepared. I know this is the will of God and you're preparing and you're almost ready to go, but I wouldn't be your pastor if I didn't come and tell you the truth, if I didn't come and, sh and share with you what God shared with me. He said, there is something radically wrong with you and Edith going to Guatemala, to go into that Orphanage Agua Viva. 
How many of you know that my flesh wasn't real happy when I heard that? I didn't jump up and down for joy at that moment. But you know what? Praise God, I realized that what do you do, what do you do when you don't know what to do at that moment? Oh yeah, we had all our plans, we had the Word of God, we had the will of God, and we're going, and now, bang, there's something radically wrong if you go. So thank God I didn't do anything. I even got up in front of our fellowship and I, I explained that to them. I said, well, you know what we've been taught for years? If you're not sure, don't do anything. You know what, the, what it is? Wait on the Lord. <laughs> Wait on God. Hallelujah. Wait on God. I love that verse, be still and know that I am God. Well, a couple months went by. In fact, New Year's, Christmas and New Year's came and went. And our daughter called one day, crying, all upset, and said, you're not going to believe this. And I said, what, what do you mean? She said, the folks that were running Agua Viva, the folks that were ahead of it, the folks that were going to teach you and and show you the rope, so to speak. They just up and left. They were back in the United States. They just picked up everything and left. There's nobody here right now. That's how good, <laughs> that's how wonderful our Heavenly Father is. That's one reason I fear Him so much. Honor Him. Revere Him. Give him all the glory. Father, it's yours. I'd gladly give it all to you. Because I'm going to tell you something, folks. If we had gone, if we'd have run right through that stop sign, it would have destroyed us. We weren't prepared for that. God was preparing us to go and to help and to learn. We were learning, learning Spanish so we could speak it better, you know? Those wonderful little kids. But God, but God stopped it because he knew we'd have got there and it certainly would have destroyed us, folks. Agua viva, living water, living water, living water. The living water of God flowed that day, believe me. And then what did God do? He prepared us for the next step. He prepares for the next thing that he had for us. Whatever we need, <laughs> whatever we need from the giver of life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A fountain, a fountain, a fountain of life to de depart from the snares of death. Yes. You know, the enemy... <laughs> The enemy set a trap. The enemy set a trap. He was hoping that he could take us out. That's his ultimate goal anyway, folks. He wants to drain you and drain you and drain you of your joy, of your blessing, of your health, and everything. And then he wants to perform his ultimate task, and that is to take you out. Don't let him take you out. You know what? He just as soon that you just go to heaven and get out of his hair. That is, if you're operating by the precious Holy Ghost, if you're full of the fire of God and the glory of God, you are a threat to him. He can't handle that. I said he can't handle that, glory to God. To turn away from the snares of death. A noose for catching animals. That's what a snare is. A hook for the nose. A trap. Our Lord said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I am come that they might have life and have it how? More abundantly. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The root word there for abundantly means more 
super abundantly in number, degree, or character. Jesus has come that you and I might have life more abundantly, super abundantly in degree, number, or character. Glory, glory to God. Still in the book of Proverbs, we're going to look at verse 16 of chapter 15. It says, Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble, trouble therewith. Better is little with the fear of the Lord. You know, the fear of God, the true, proper fear of God gives us satisfaction wherever we are. We'll look at, we're going to look at uh, Philippians chapter 4. Paul said in verse 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know, how, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full, to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Just like Paul, we're foreigners here and we're on a journey, amen? We're on a journey. And joy, joy is the strength of our life, outwardly, inwardly. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He said, I know how to be abased. That means to depress, to humiliate in condition or heart, to bring low, to cast down, and so forth. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. That means that word superabundant again in quality and superior in quality. In other words, to be in excess. I am content whether I have nothing or whether I am in excess. I am satisfied. I have learned to be satisfied in what condition I find myself. And then he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus said this in, in uh, verse 5 of chapter 15 of John. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that we can do all things through you, precious Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Aren't you thankful? You can do all things through him, through Jesus. Don't you just love that name? That song we sang before, I just want to, I just want to say Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. Without him, I can truly do nothing. Without him, you can do nothing. But with him, but with him, you know, it doesn't matter. All things are possible. Yeah, what is not possible with God? All things are possible with God. The impossible, the things that we see as impossible are possible with Him. You know, God didn't explain everything to us. I think, you know why? He didn't want everything to become a doctrine. <laughs> God wants to be free to do whatever God wants to do. Praise God. Whatever he wants to do, glory to God. He is God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Many, many, many are the benefits of the, prof of the uh, proper fear of God. I see our time is waning, so we'll probably stop there on our list today. And believe me, we're never going to uh, exhaust the list. 
We're never going to exhaust the list, but we're going to share a lot of these things because we need these things in our life. Amen? We need these things, the things that the proper fear of God produces. It produces it's the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. It produces humility in me and you. It produces a hatred for evil, not for people, but a hatred for the works of the evil one. It is the beginning of wisdom. It produces long life. It gives us strong confidence, the fear of God. Cast not away your confidence. It's a way to turn one away from the snares of death, a fountain of life. And the proper fear of God gives us that satisfaction. (laughs) It doesn't matter what condition I find myself. You know what it is, folks? It's being in the kingdom. You can be born again and not have entered into the kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy (laughs) in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You're not moved by what you see. The only thing you fear is God himself. Glory to God. Be blessed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God.